All I'm, I'm just saying, you know, this is for the vlog, just so they can see. It is for a documentary. <laughs> Gang, gang. 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 Gang, 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 it's a real nigga party, you cannot get in. Oh my god. Hi, Aaron. Come on, Aaron's in. I can't shake your hand. Okay. We got two complimentary white people in the back. They're black, though. <laughs> <laughs> I do not mess with rappers. No, I'm not. Hi, Jackson. Dad. This nigga, he just hood in the morning? How long are the shoes? You know, accident. Yeah. What's up? Yeah. 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 Yeah.
Uh, it was yesterday to be exact. Played against Hampton University. I'm already one of the older guys, so you already walk in, you have a lot to prove. Not just to anyone else, but to yourself, because it's the simple fact that you define the odds of age at the moment. I mean, yeah, my age may not be too high, because these guys in college right now that are playing that are probably my age or maybe a year under me, which isn't that much of, you know what I'm saying, a big change. But it's just a simple the fact of just that in general. Um, but nah, man, like, I'm going to go through this, like, just the whole process of it. On the bus riding, ain't no AC first. No AC. Got the heater on. I ain't never in my life seen them act like that. So I was like, alright, cool. Um, that was that. Rode up there. You know what I'm saying? Great ride. Great time to just reflect. You know what I'm saying? Get your mind right for the entire process that we about to go through. Because a lot of the guys on the on my team this year are new to college. Um, so. I mean, I'm fairly new, too, to playing college ball. I mean, I played the overseas semi-pro, played with the military in different branches. So, and I played, I mean, with different adult leagues. It's just not the same to me. So, getting there to the school, first thing you see is this big, big, like, arena. So, you think, like, dang, like, we about to really play. And, like, we'd have made it. It's the first thing you think. So, yeah, you take that, you take that, you, like, you gotta be graceful towards that, and that's what it was, um, walking in the building, it's just that, that atmosphere, you know what I'm saying, that, like, that prestigious D1, like, this environment, it's, it's a different, it's, it's different, it's, but, like, that. it's hard to explain, it's different. Uh, walk in that locker room, you see, before you walk in the locker room, you see the other team, you see these big, giant motherfuckers, like, you start thinking, like, damn, he play ball? Like, I'm short. I'm only 5'10". On a good day. 5'10", so, I'm looking at guys, it's like, 7 foot, damn near. No, nah, not even damn near. To me, from a short man's perspective, we think everybody is giants if you're over 6 foot. I don't care. That's just how I feel about it. You tall, you six foot, you a giant in my eyesight. That is 1,000. But, see, them, they looking at us. We all small. Like, honestly, we're, we're a smaller team. Our tallest guys, I think, are six six. So, that's our tallest. Their shortest guy is six one. So, going into it, it is what it is. Just the, the whole beginning process as you walk into the locker room, all right? Beautiful locker room. I mean, dope. They had, they were very hospitable to us. They gave us a lot of good hospitality. Go to the trainer after you get dressed. I mean, me, I, I was hurt. I was rushing. I wanted to get out there. I wanted to feel that. You know what I'm saying? Get warmed up. Just get that feel of the goals. Go to the trainer. You got the people just looking at you like, oh, this little nigga. Like, yeah, he got tats and he whatever, but he little. Like, okay, cool. You already get underestimated. Off oh, rip. Whatever. It happens. But then you go out there in that court, man, and it's that's when it, uh, it hits you. Like you just think, like, oh damn, this is this is what I seen on TV growing up. This is like, in a sense, this is the stage. It's not the NBA, but it's the stage. It's the stage before the NBA. So that, that just that was a dope feeling. Warm ups. You going through now the actual like the whole situation, like you know what I'm saying? What you see in March Madness, or what you just regular games you watch when you see the warm ups. It's real life. So for me, what I do is any game, I don't care who it is, I take all warm ups serious. Cause right there, that's my chance to lock in. I mean, yeah, you fuck on the bus, cause you got your little music on or whatever. You, you tuned in or whatever. But I'm saying, like, the warm-ups is when it really hits you. So, I'm just sitting there, I'm like, lock in, yo. Knock shots down. You miss, don't get down, you know what I'm saying? It's warm-ups. This is why you warming up. After that, you go on, you talk to the coach. Give the strategy. And you can just tell, like, just, even, like, 
the air in the locker room is different, you know? It's different. And you just start feeling it like, okay, we really here. We really here. After that, you go back out on the court, you run out of your team. You united, you won, you know what I'm saying? You hype. Then you meet in the middle. I'm a team captain on my team, so you meet with them. You meet these guys. I've seen these guys' articles that I'm playing against from Hampton. You know what I'm saying? I, I've been, I do my, I do my studying against my opponent before I play him. It's just, I was brought up like that. But you, you look, you like, okay, I, I met this dude. Like, he's not like a celebrity. I'm not starstruck. It's just a simple fact that it's surreal. Like this guy has a name in NCAA D1 in the MEAC. Here it is. I'm just, you know, a little old yay from around the way. You feel me? When the OGs are still out here trying to do it. So you just like, yeah, you, just, you let it sink in. But you don't, you know what I'm saying, let your pride or anything get shook. You know what I'm saying? You don't, don't want to let nobody see you sweat. After that, go back into the warm ups. You still warming up. After that, you go to the huddle. Now you about to break it down, you know what I'm saying? You about to finally get that opportunity to turn them big lights on. Them big lights. Not the lights that everybody used to seeing in intramural games, rec league games, and none of that. Nah, I'm talking about the lights, baby. The stage is set. You got everybody in the audience. A big arena. Hold like at least 15 racks, like of people, you know what I'm saying? 15,000. So now you just sitting there, you're like, man, this is it's really happening, you know what I'm saying? Not to mention, you on TV. But you don't think about that if you locked in. I was locked in. You know? I, I ain't think about it. I never thought about it. In the back of my mind, a, a part of me would say, you, you here? And I mean, it, it's, that's one of the pieces of it. But then, like, when you in that huddle, your coach now look at you. You used to getting in the lineups or whatever. Used to, like, starting or whatever. But even if you don't start... A true player, true teammate, he's not going to care. It's the simple fact that you made it here. And you don't know what that road took for you to get there, you know what I'm saying? So the whole time I'm sitting there in the huddle, he's talking to us, and he's starting out, he's setting his lineups, all right? As a humble guy, you, I don't never expect to just be that top dude. That's just not me. I know what I'm here for. I know why I'm, I'm on, on the team. I'm going to do what I got to do. And I'm going to have pride in what I do. Call them line. They call out the starting lineup. Bam, there it is. You don't get it. It is what it is. But you know you're gonna get quality minutes, and that's all that matters. And whatever minutes you get, you go on that court. You do what you gotta do. You do everything you gotta do, and you leave it on the floor. And at the end of the game, you know that you do what you gotta do. But then you go through the the announcement. You know what I'm saying? You start announcing the names. You start lineup. You cheering your teammates on going down. This is all happening. The crowd is looking. They booing. They doing whatever. They heckling. Whatever. They doing that. To me, it's all beautiful. It's beautiful. You know what I'm saying? Now they playing the music. You know what I'm saying? Getting the other, the home team ready. The crowd getting like, ah, oh, you know what I'm saying? And then it starts. It starts. Now, not only are the lights on. You got the sounds, you got the crowd, you got the band that's playing, you got the dance team, you got the cheerleaders, you got the fans of Hampton University, but then you got our little our little section of fans for, you know what I'm saying, Mac U. To some, it may be like, oh, damn, we ain't got that many, you know what I'm saying, fans. It's the fact that we have fans that are there, that's good enough, you know what I'm saying? That's, that means a lot more than people may see. But to me, it meant, it meant a lot. And you got the people back home that you don't even know is watching TV. So that's the crazy thing about it. when you're on TV, you never know who's truly watching. So regardless, you gotta like block that out. Block it out. All that. The people in the actual arena, you block out everything and you just sink in. And then I understand now why it may be difficult and I understand like why people, you know what I'm saying, they get told, oh, he wasn't focused, he was scared, nah, nah, nah. It's easy to get scared out there, man, if you're not used to that type of exposure. For real, for real. You don't know who's out there in the crowd. You don't know what kind of scout is out there watching you. You don't know nothing, you know what I'm saying? So, to all those guys that have been on this platform many a times, and they've been doing it for four years in these colleges, I salute you. I, like, I, I salute you, bro, because it's, 
<laughs> it takes a lot. It takes a lot of focus. It takes a lot of determination, and it takes a lot of poise, to be honest with you. But being out there, man, like that experience alone, man, it was a good feel. Coach, when the coach finally, you know what I'm saying, he called my number. He said, "Go in there." I've been playing basketball since I was five, six, some years. I'm 27 now, so that's about roughly 21 years. I've been hooping. But the second time in my life, this was like that moment. My name, my number got called, but it wasn't a normal feel. It was that feel of like, this is it. This is it was it was a different feel. You know what I'm saying? People looking, your teammates cheering you on. All right, yeah, let's get it. You know what I'm saying? Woo woo woo. That hypes you. It, it lets you know like you made it. You're getting that game. Look around, and this is what I, I I look. I ain't gonna lie, I'm, I was giddy as hell. For those that don't know what giddy means, I was excited, I was very ecstatic. You know what I'm saying? I overwhelmed, whatever. But I did not looked around, and I let that I, I let that moment sink in. And from there, man, it was, it was a wrap. You know what I'm saying? It took off. I just let the game take me where it needed to take me. We lost. The deficit was pretty high. I mean. It's all right, though. I mean, you lose some, you win some. But that whole game was just to let us know where we stood as a team, what we need to work on and everything. And just to show people that, you know what I'm saying, we belong. I mean, we may not, you know what I'm saying, be able to be in one of the divisions yet. But in the division that we're in, we're one of the tough competitors. Honestly, we are. And, I mean, I, I got a dope group of dudes with me. These guys I have are solid. Like, there's a lot of raw talent. So I feel like we good where we at. What is just... That experience, man, was dope. But before I end this, I'm gonna just say, um, a year ago, it was a lot of people that would have never thought. You know what I'm saying? I would probably even be here. To be honest with you, I don't even think I would have been. Here. So it, it speaks a lot. It speaks it speaks volumes. But it's just the simple fact of last night being out there. People back home in Texas, my, my people that was been me in the military that see me, and they linked out, they connected to me and let me know, man, I'm proud I saw you out there and this and that, da da da. da. Even the people that don't they really get, really care for me, they don't have to say nothing. But I know that I know they felt some type of way because of, you can tell, and it's good, it's good. But it's just like. It's the fact that I never gave up that dream, you know what I'm saying? And I'm living my dream right now. I'm living my dream, man. So, basically what I'm saying is, for those people out there that feel like you have a dream, and you feel like it's something that's unreachable, I will say to you what I had to say to myself a year and a half ago when I was at the point of giving up on every single thing. Not suicidal thoughts, because I have... I have things that I have to take care of, and suicide is not one of the things that you need to do to take care of. By giving up, I mean just not caring. Them. I will tell you, don't you ever give up. Don't you ever let nobody take your energy. Don't let nobody take your power. You can do whatever you want to do. You can, as long as you push yourself and you believe. Even if you don't believe, if you have people in your corner, man, you're going to make it. You're going to make it. But even though they're in your corner, you can lean on them, but don't always use them as your crutch. They're there in your corner for a reason, because they see something in you. But eventually, you're going to have to see it for yourself. And once you see it for yourself, man, you're going to be all right. And the last thing I'm going to say before I get off of here is that I, I posted up something on Facebook about a year and a half ago. Um, I forgot. I can't find the post. But I put... When I was down and out, nobody was around. So don't be around me. Don't be around me when I'm up. So when I was down, everybody was gone. Now that I'm up, don't be. So with that said, man, I appreciate y'all for staying tuned to the channel, man. More vlogs coming. I just had to tell you about my experience because I promised I would, and it's so overwhelming. And it's a blessing. It's a great opportunity to be able to share that with people. And just eventually like, inspire other people 
to keep chasing it and never give up on what you truly believe that you want to do in your life, you know what I'm saying? Because you never know what you can do until you push yourself to those limits. So, uh, that's pretty much it, man. Again, thank you. Uh, hopefully, you subscribe to the channel. More to come. It's rough. I know it is, but I'm still working on it. I'm brand new to this. So, just stick with me on this. Trust me, I'm going to make this good. Just like I'm making these dreams happen, I'm going to make this happen. So, other than that, we inspire bomb. Yeah, yeah, anyway.